Good day, everyone. I am Matt Harrison, and you are listening to the Giri Cast, the Malaga fan podcast on Sport Direct Radio and as part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. On a rainy afternoon at La Rosaleda, sadly, sadly there were not many points raining down on Malaga Club de Football. A 1 1 draw with Linares saw Malaga fall further behind that coveted automatic promotion spot, even though they jumped over a beefer and into third place. Easter wasn't exactly great, but there is one resurrection I'm sure we will be praising later. And speaking of Easter, let me introduce you to my excellent co-host. Hello, Nick Bell. Oh, well, all those egg puns have really um, put me off my, my sway there. Um, good day to you, Matt. How are you? I'm okay. I'm sort of cringing at the, you know, <laughs> doing two egg references, I realised was, nah, that, 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 that's just, you know, that's like an open goal, isn't it? It's too easy and 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 thus very boring. I should have, uh, needs to try better. Did you have a nice Easter anyway? Uh, yeah, I guess. I, I just, you know, I'm not particularly religious and I don't have children, so... Uh, I, I seemed like a normal weekend to me, apart from going, oh, yeah, there's a lot of people here. And, oh, yeah, there's a big sort of parade going down the street. <laughs> um, which only, I only saw one, actually, in Marbella. And I, I, I avoided the ones in Malaga, although I believe they were, a lot of them delayed, or not delayed, sorry, um, cancelled in Malaga because, as I suggested in my intro, it was uh, it was very, very rainy Sunday. Um yeah, it was quite um, tough in the city on Sunday. Um, yeah, I'm sure it was um, yeah. Uh, just the other thing I was going to mention just before we get into this, I'm, I, I just want to put it publicly out there today that, um, you know, these guys do an amazing job on our social media, which I don't really do much for. And th- th- I've really enjoyed the 120 reasons uh, to love Malaga stuff and i love the fact they chose points mean patreon today but the photo you've chosen of me also <laughs> um I d- you know ai'd up is just ridiculous um someone someone else i've had a couple of messages about it today and someone said like y- y- they've taken years off you and i said well it, you know i do live in marbella um, you know i could look like this if i had enough money I, there are places i can go to in marbella to get this sort of plastification, but um, I just want to put it out there: I did not support the chosen photo. It is mad. <laughs> I, I very much supported the chosen photo, very much for your complexion on it as well. You were a very tanned on it, which was very interesting um, to see. But dimples look quite nice, but the lips as well. Um, I definitely preferred the one we did a couple of years ago, and I can't even remember why we did it. Where it's me looking like ultra Spanish in front of a bottle of Zocco. Like it's like I'm sort of, I look like a Don. Um, I think that's the inspiration. It sort of feels to me like when I first saw it, 1950s Coca Cola billboard. That's what I'm thinking. And I think if we play this right and reach out to Zocco, um, as you alluded to before, if you can get paid in Pacharan to uh, to be the face of, I think they might have they're not the ones to go for because um, I did try to find the original photo, which has been adapted for this post, which I did eventually through going on Twitter and Googling hashtag points being Patreon. But on my route to find the original photo, which again, I think looks much better. It's, it's, it's not, I don't look mad. Um, I do look like I'm coked up either because my eyes are pretty bulging in the one you guys, I don't know who did it. I won't put point fingers, um, but I forgot the uh, Baines, which is the you know the probably the second biggest patch around company. They tweeted me a long tweet once supporting points mean patch around and thanking me for you know my support of patch around. So I think if we're going to target any for a billboard, it'll have to be Baines, um, which is better patch around actually. I'm not just mm. saying that because they have got in contact before. Um, Let's make it happen. There's so many campaigns going off at the same time. Um, Capitan Matt for for like a foundation now. Oh, wait, this, this is red wine. This is not Patreon. I've not gone. <laughs> I'm still on holiday. Um, 
Yeah, and also I should say yesterday I, I was very happy for you, Nick, um, in your um, your own campaign to yes. get Logoede as one of the 120 reasons to love Malaga. And I've noticed today both there's articles on El Desmarque and Malaga Oi, both sort of praising how good a job he's doing at um, Argentinos Juniors. It is, and and for context for the listener, it's been a it's been a long campaign, and there's been days in this because, like, say, we're doing 120 of them, where there's been questions put to the group, and they've gone, "Oh, who should we have today?" And I've had this image made for about two months, and it's not that I'm a massive, huge lover of all things Pablo Guede. Um, I just think it, it's time for his redemption arc. I think there's a lot of frustration put his way for how he started last season being his fault and that fair share is correct playing Juan Fran as a right wing back never a good idea but we've got to remember that he was a successful member of the um you know the team that got promoted um out of uh, Segunda Bay um is a is a looked resplendent in that blue and yellow jersey as well and also you know was manager and kind of kept us up a little bit but you know is a success in his own right you know does very well in South America but it just wasn't right from him Alica so vindication my name is Nick Bell <laughs> and to be fair to him if you hear him talk about his uh his feelings for Malaga club the football I think they are very genuine and he does love the club and uh um he was good fun actually during the 2022 World Cup, wasn't he, where he was posting quite a lot on social media, obviously following Argentina. And I think he went out there and he posted videos of being back home in Argentina. And yes, he's he's a passionate man. And, you know, you can't, you can't fall that side of him. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, good to see. And like I said, I, I'm sorry, just before we press record, I did look at his record since he's been um, the manager of Argentinos juniors um los bichos because i have a friend who supports them weirdly um of course i know, of course, I know they call los bichos he, he's he's from bristol but he <laughs> went there once and they were his adopted argentine team um they've won seven drawn three lost two so he's uh and he's ahead of martin de michaelis's river plate at the moment if you want more malaga angles from the argentinian football league so um yeah well done pablo um you know there's no I don't know. I, I have no ill feelings towards him. I, I suppose I've got over it now after that bad start last year. But uh, yes, yeah. um, exactly. why not go check out the other 90 reasons to like Malaga we've posted so far? Um, is it 90 we've done? I think we're up to 93 with points okay. being or 92 with points being patched around today. Had to do a lot of fighting on the weekend to get Kevin featured, but I got there. In the end. <laughs> <laughs> I got there in the end. Um, uh, just yeah, there's not really much news, hence why we're talking about Pablo Guede <laughs> and uh, my displeasure at uh, our social media team. But uh, I'll, I'll just throw in a couple of things, and I don't know if there's much to say about it, um, especially because it's probably linked to the Theuta game, and obviously we'll do a preview pod later in the week, so. I don't want to talk about it too much, but uh, Malaga have done a uh, discount for season ticket holders and the, like, I can't remember, the, what, the club members, I forgot what they've called it this time, because it's not called Fiel Malagista anymore, it is. I'd, anyway, club members, and they're doing 50% um, off ticket prices for anyone that's a member of that, so that's good, isn't it? It is. Alex Ashmore offered me that this morning, uh, or last night, I assume, and I must have fallen asleep or something. And then I woke up and uh, Luke Chambers put the fear of God in me because he was like, oh, have you got your tickets for the Sayuta game yet? I was like, no, Alex has put 50% off in the group. I'm, I'm going to see what that's about. He said, get them now. There's there's none left. So I panicked and bought them. There's loads left in 538 at the minute. There's plenty, but uh, I imagine with this offer, which is, which is great, they kind of did this last season as well didn't need to really pack out yeah. the stadium you know get the supporters in there and you know i'm sure we'll talk about the attendance later but it, there was a noticeable difference um in the way that we played without those you know additional circa eight ten thousand additional fans so um hey any discounts are great discount especially if you're getting to watch malaga club to football and do you know what like I, I know we sort of slag off the club sometimes for how they do certain things but in regards of like season ticket holders 
um, passing their ticket on to like, if I don't say I couldn't go to a game and I can pass it on to someone, it's actually really quite easy. And I think they advertise that quite well. Um, so yeah, you know, things like that. Yeah. Good. Stuff like um, that in general, ticket prices are great for, for, for what even last season for a ticket up in, like you say, in 538, 14 euros. What, what, 12 pound 20, um, 12 pound 20, something like that. Yeah. And like I've said, I've, I've been in these pretty quite crappy away ends at like Atletico San Lugano in particular and paid 25 euros. So, yeah, you can't like, you know, for, you know, there was not a good view there. So, yeah, definitely ticket price wise, that is one thing the club are very good at, definitely. Um, and, you know, hey, we have quite a full stadium of a lot of the time. I wonder why that is because. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually cheap. Um, and well, just I a shout out. I, I guess I guess we'll perhaps talk about this a bit more in the preview show, but you know, we'll just mention in the news now that um Malaga have given Theuta a, a much more generous um allocation than I expected, 700 tickets, and apparently they, they they're pretty much gone. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I like again, I've got some Ceuta friends on my Instagram now from when I traveled over there especially one of the guys is quite in with the sort of I, I wouldn't say they're the ultras but like the hardcore and like he's put in like this is the most monumental away day in their history and stuff and i was like whoa uh, it's, uh it's not good for That's us exactly but... what you want to hear isn't it when yeah they've won the last five from five bringing 700 fans it's the most monumental day in their history <laughs> and there's a giri cast sort of meetup so the stars are aligning here matt and, uh, yeah. and they're not looking good. I'm just more interested. Is the violinist going to come over with them? Is the violinist going to grace the pitch of La Rosaleda, the guy that uh, was at Theuta? Again, another man I met in a bar when <laughs> I was just being passed over to people and being told, oh, this is so and so. And then they said, this guy's the, uh, I think it was violinista, which uh, was definitely a word. I was like, oh, violinist. I thought, what could that possibly mean until the next day when there was literally a man playing the violin on the pitch? <laughs> Um, and I now follow him on Instagram, and he's a uh, he's an interesting guy too. Uh, he's he's a Betis fan, actually, though. I think he's just Ooh. suddenly he's found himself across the water. Um, anyway, uh, there's a nice little plug for hey, if you want to hear more about Suta fans and their violinist, uh, listen to the podcast later in the week when we'll preview that game a bit more. Um, it seems every week, Nick, we are picking out um, different things Malaga are saying they're going to do for the 120th anniversary. Um, the latest one announced this week um, is a round table meeting is the term they're using. It's going to be, again, there's the, I'll, I'll say the names. I, I don't know who all these people are, so forgive me, but there's Ishmael Diaz, Esteban Vigo, Jose Maria Movia. Uh, the name I do know is Javi Gracia, who, of course, some of our listeners might know as being the, um, would he manage? Watford, wasn't it? Watford in um, the Premier and, League. And Leeds. and Leeds, yeah, of course. Yeah, he was at Leeds very briefly as well, wasn't he? And there's some people from Malaga Oi. Um, again, all it seems to be is they're going to discuss the history of Malaga in front of an audience at uh, La Melagueta Cultural Centre. Um does that excite you, Nick? It, it sounds like a very, um, like you say, fine evening to spend. It's It's got those kind of, I went to watch Stanley Tucci at the Royal Albert Hall not long ago. It's kind of got that vibe to it. Um, I really don't think it does. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to overrule you there. This does not have the same vibe to me. <laughs> I think it does. It's, it's telling the story, isn't it? To say, like, you know, what's their experiences of... Malaga, what does Malaga mean to them and things like that? You know, it, so it, it again, reading into the history of it and getting different perspectives and different experiences, it's not a treasure hunt. Let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> it's not a treasure hunt. <laughs> Which, but, again, I think the treasure hunt, I, I've again, like, forgive me, I've not read up on it. I think there's some issue with that because that's meant to happen tomorrow. And I think they've had to move that around. It's like, Seems to be a lot of enough time. You were saying before as well as potentially something with the shirt as well that's been yeah. So as we say, the business said, world to the right. Yeah, again, uh, forgive me, I've not read up on it, but I have seen the the 120th anniversary anniversary shirt, which we talked about last week. Um, you were supposed to go and collect it tomorrow. 
but they've now said, oh, we want to make it as special as possible. So they're going to do it. Ah, I forgot one of the plazas. I forgot which plaza off the top of my head. So it's going to be next week. <laughs> which, to be fair, they did do it last season's home show, didn't they? When they launched it, they they went and did it mm-hmm. in the in the in the plaza and they got everybody to wear the shirt after they go into it and took a big photo and things like that, didn't they? Yeah, so that was maybe there's some method behind the madness, but you don't like to hear more talk of things being delayed, especially the treasure hunt. Now that we've put together crack teams <laughs> being delayed, which is which is not ideal, but. I suppose yeah. it's in the spirit of everything. Well, I think I think I, I can really understand. I think that might actually be happening still, but I think they might have changed the time of it. Um, again, like I'm really hopefully it's tomorrow because I'll be honest with you, I can't wait to talk about that on the preview show and find out what it actually was well, it and is. what sizes were <laughs> and what mad is. is. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Well, yeah, I just want to hear what it is again. Um I, I, the reason I'm saying I've not really read up on these things is because it was quite hard to find out about these things because, again, I'll use the word I used a lot last week, vague, very vague. <laughs> <laughs> Considering they wanted to, you know, we've said on the podcast, you know, 120th anniversary, is it really that big a deal? You know, 125th maybe, but fair enough, if they're going to go for celebrating it, go for it. But, uh, yeah, they're going for it with a... A barrage of uh, <laughs> with ambiguity, <laughs> yes. Um, yes, uh, so there's more there, but um, tell you what is quite clear cut is the the game we watched on Sunday. Um, you know, there's no ambigu- ambiguity or vagueness there. We know we drew 1 1 with Linares, so let, let's talk about that. Um, I've put on the agenda, um, at the top weather chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was raining that's all i wanted to say really um it, it really was and it really was like um like i i, I got to malaga you know you you know, quite early in the afternoon and thought well it'll stop um and then i got to baramanas madrid um it was quite a bizarre experience in baramanas madrid because we all stood inside um which again sort of links to the attendance thing you said, the fact that we could all fit inside because there wasn't that many of us. Um, it didn't stop. It rained a lot. And uh, yes, uh, my, my blue Adidas trainers are actually sparkling now, though. They did take an absolute hammer in. It was... Yeah, yeah. it would become a, like a, a, a vein through the conversations with not just yourself, but also with, with Chris on his match day video. It was just how, I don't want to say ill-prepared, you all are in Spain for rain. Mm. Um, but the fact that you all had footwear which wasn't suitable um, yeah. says a lot to me about how you were prepared. Whilst me and Luke, you know, we live in constant rain, basically. So, uh, you know, we, we never complain about wet feet. But uh, To be honest with you, there was quite a lot of people there with um, ponchos on. Um, like, I did see people, um, I, think, I think a few of the sort of, um, we'll say, illegal salesman people you might find on the beachfront. I won't use that <laughs> term on here. Um, I think they'd realise if they run up the road to La Rosaleda, they'd be in demand. Um, I think that's what I, I will now also refer to them to. I, <laughs> <want> to <laughs> legal sales I didn't, didn't want to say the, the most, I don't know, slightly more slander sounded <laughs> term. Um, but yeah, there's quite a lot of people in there with ponchos and, uh, but uh, I, I, um, oh, t- tell what I, I should have mentioned this. Um, um, Christian Makowski, I, I know you guys saw it, sent a photo of me in my season ticket seat in, um, you know, where we sit in La Rosaleda. Um, and I was sort of by myself, like half, half like camouflage because I had jeans on and my blue hoodie over the top. And one of my friends yesterday, I showed the photo and he said, you look like a Malaga ninja. Oh, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> take that one. But okay, so. it, it it was certainly a factor because obviously, um, you know, there's a lot of people who say we need this. You know, I'm I'm glad it's over now because I go on holiday next week. So I'm glad yeah. the rain's out of the way, but they needed it. But the second part is it played a massive effect, as you mentioned before, to the attendance because mm. it was kind of like a clash of two things. Because not only did we have the really bad weather, which would keep people away because as many of us yeah. will know, listen to this, only a small section of La Rosaleda is covered. 
Um, but the second part of it as well, it was Semana Santa. So we were naturally expecting a bit of a, a, a kick down in attendance. I think it was then further kicked down by the, the weather and people choosing to stay away. And as I mentioned before, we, you, you cannot disassociate the fact that we have such great attendances and such great performances at home from time to time. Mm. And we really flattered to deceive at home, which was unusual against opposition which you know didn't have too much about them but they looked better than they were this game and i think that lack of uh fans in the stadium probably fed into the team a little bit in my opinion yeah and, and i guess it sort of goes the other way a little bit as well because I, I don't know if you guys saw on the stream and i'm not saying there was like an army of them but there was a, a nice little band of linares fans in the corner and you know it does almost make you think oh do they play up for? I don't think they're like a club they're associated with having much of an away end at a lot of games. So, mm. you know, they saw an, an empty, you know, 14,000 still great, you know, uh, generally, but, but level, obviously, yeah. yeah, compared to most Malaga games, of course, is well off what we're used to. Um, and the illegal they, sales people had a field day selling the ponchos to the Alanaris fans. Every single one of them had a poncho on as well. So, oh, yeah, they, 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 they sort of, bit more in the high-end hills so maybe maybe i don't know when it rains up there maybe they came with them i don't know <laughs> Their own bonkers. yeah like down here you just sort of expect it'll stock that have been rained on in la rosaleda before but you sort of go okay get out your system and it'll stop but this was 90 minutes of rain um and yeah just just really quickly before we do move on to talking about the game um we should perhaps give a shout out to the Rosaleda, Rosaleda fans uh, fanzine, which we featured in this week. And uh, I know Chris Marquez, when I met them, um, they tried to give me one outside the ground. And I looked at them and said, like, do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> I've gone, I, I sort of joke, so I joke, by the way, I've gone, because <laughs> obviously I got given a copy by Chris. I got mine out of the, my pocket. So that's me. And they're like, ah, oh, Giri cast. And I was like, so, uh, no, it's very surreal. Um, well, like I said, when you sent us a picture of it, I was just, it was a moment where I'm thinking, why is there a picture of me in this Spanish magazine? <laughs> um, but like you say, it is, you know, fundamentally really, really good. It sounds like there is a good connection between ourselves and them. Um, yeah, it's really <laughs> good. Really for uh, you and Alex to, 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 to write something for them. So clearly me and Luke are the specials of the Giri cast. Um, but... I'm not writing. I couldn't, I couldn't write something for them in Spanish. No chance. No, no exactly. Um, but... but I was also, sorry, I've got my, I've, I've said my grievance about the uh, Giri cast social media and the Pacharan photo. I was not happy to see my face above the words, it's coming home. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. I did that it's... With you, Matt. I, yeah, of course you would as well. Um, so I did tweet them. Um, after the game and, and did make this clear and I might have been a little bit too strong because there was no reply to the tweet uh, not a like or a laughy face which it was meant to be a bit laughy but I did use the term uh, puta it's coming home and I said like I'm Welsh I can't have this um, so anyway but uh, go read their fanzine it's great <laughs> I did it, you know, it generally is good. I have, I have read it. it it's, a, it's a lovely idea. And they, they seem to be doing it regularly as well. So it's cool. And it's yeah, nice, it's like, passport size. So it's, you know... you've thing to collect as well, especially if you don't go to uh, La Rosaleda often, um, let's say, as you or, or Christy, for example. It's a, it's, a, it's a good keepsake as well, because there isn't... Yeah. I don't know about you, they don't tend to do, like, too many, like, programmes or anything like that there. So there's not much stuff you can keepsake from... You visit so no, you know, something like that is nice i've always been quite like like obviously i've done a lot of ground hopping and a lot of ground hoppers are precious about programs unfortunately i i'm i just i'm not but um yeah for definitely like if we had ground hoppers coming over they, they'd be buzzing with something like that and it, yeah, it does yeah. look great as well it's a really good fancy so shout out to that um Let's go to the actual game then. Um, things I thought, you know, talking about things that look great. Uh, Stev, uh, Stevin, Kevin's back in the start in 11. That was hard to say, weirdly. Um, that looked great to me. Um, Puga and Victor Garcia back in the defence. And Juanpe keeping his place um, ahead of the slightly injured uh, Gennaro. Um, when you saw the start in 11, Nick, 
I know you and Luke did the live stream. What was the sort of reaction pre-match? Um, I think with a few of them, we, we we were expecting. I think we'd all spoke on the preview show about Kevin coming back in if he was available. So that was a, you know a great opportunity. But I think we all agreed as well that Juanpe deserved to be um, hooked after his performance at um, Algeciras as well because he just you know really really was poor, looked disinterested and and things like that. So it was a surprise to see him keep his place. Yes, um, in place of Gennaro. And I understand that obviously Gennaro is injured, but there's other options there for me. You know, there's your Easy Marino if you want an out and out centre defensive midfielder. You know, if you want a bit of creativity, Aaron Ochoa and Maloney is back from international duty. Um, so it, it, it was just a bit confusing why he kept his place, but mm, you know, for the rest right. of it, was quite happy to see. Yeah, because obviously Victor, I'd, I'd argue, is a bit more attacking than Danny Sanchez and I think we said like Carlos Buca we all sort of give honourable mentions to in the the last podcast um just quickly you said about Isan Marino um and I've not got the numbers in front of me now but I, I didn't realise quite how prolific um Antonito is being in the B team as well um yeah, yeah. The weekend I was like, and I saw his number I'm sure he's like in double figures for goals for them this season yeah. Going against Malaga City on Saturday, didn't he? Stephen yeah. Cork of Malaga City of all of all people, yeah, but yes. um, um, yeah, no, he, he like I say he seems to be impressing. But both, both, both of them and Aaron Ochoa Maloney just seem to have been mm, and Mario so. Diego Mario as well just seem to have been out of the picture a lot recently. So you know where we trusted them a lot at the turn, at, you know, just before Christmas, they seem to have I don't know fallen out of favour or is it a uh, We've got more experience now, or is it they can't get in? I'm not too sure. But I don't know. they both, I think, wasn't it Ceuta where both Antonito and Izan had bad games, or one of them had a bad game that weekend. Um, one of them had a bad game the weekend before. I feel like they both, yeah. and I think that you say just sort of thought, you know, let's protect them a bit, which I sort of get. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm desperate to see them in the starting eleven, but I do like both. I really like both. I particularly like Antonito. Actually, I think he's a. Uh, a really good footballer and obviously Aaron Ochoa is he can be spectacular um but yeah obviously obviously very different players to Gennaro so I'm, I was just sort of you know I wasn't ex expecting either of those to directly replace him but um it's fair to say though with uh you know out Gennaro again um we had another poor start to the game yeah we were very open um you know, one of the things I admired about Linares in the first 15, 20 minutes was not just their kit. I made a point of that on the live stream is that they had this lovely sort of like racing green shirt, royal green shirt with gold trim, which I thought, oh, bit of me that. It's a but, little bit, you said, you said it's quite royal. It's, it's a little bit Aston Martin y now, I think about it. Like, if yeah, very, Martin, yeah, yeah, definitely. Sure. Definitely. Um, but they were just they would they just seemed to get on the front foot very easily with us. And I don't know if it's because we were slow to react, but we just feel felt really, really open. There was a lot of times where they were just playing a simple through ball or they were just playing through narrow channels and they were just all of a sudden they're on you. They're in front of you now, they're in front of Monte, they're taking a shot at Herrero. And they they went for the jugular area early on. And I imagine that was probably the shock and awe factor they tried to bring us. They went, if we can get a goal here early on, we can um, you know, try and defend it and yeah. you know for the, without Einar making that stop early on without Herrera's intervention it could have been more than 1-0 yeah they were they again it's, it's one of those ones were they good were we bad I do sort of feel that we were quite bad actually and like you said they were just you know <laughs> it was holy week that defence looked holy. <laughs> yeah, for, for me, there wasn't anything going wrong going forward. Don't get me wrong, I don't think we were as direct as they were, but Manon Molina was doing his thing, uh, you know, you know, with some lovely passes, played out wide to Ferrero. He was having a pop. Kevin in this first half was, you know, also impressive the way that he, he played. Because I, I was um, going to ask you about Kevin. Just So I'll ask the question now, because of course I'm going to ask you about Kevin. But um, we are going to talk about a second half substitute later. And, you know, I'm, I'm very much excited about talking about him. Um, but when I mentioned this second half substitute, I was like, wow, isn't he playing great? And Christian Makowski tweeted me saying, 
oh, I wish Kevin was playing like this. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, he's so poor. And I was like, well, like, I'm not saying I thought he was like amazing. And I think if we were to do Biznaga at the end, I might not even throw him in honorable mentions. But I think he was doing stuff. He wasn't like awful. Was, no, yeah. I, to be fair, I think we said in the first half, me and Luke, we, we were very impressed with him, you know, with the space he was finding, even some of the trickery that he was bringing to it. You know, there was I, I went down the the tricky little back heels in there and, and stuff. That's why he was playing with confidence. Um, you know, and when you come back from injury, that's what you really need. So, like I say, up top, it wasn't a matter of that we were poor even there. It just felt like our defence was really, really off uh, in this game and, and across the entire back line in that first mm -hmm. half. And unfortunately, a lot of it was being channeled through Monty and I know, and that got us sort of asking the question, saying, well, these two have been quite prolific since the turn of the year together, but actually, do we need to maybe refreshen things up and now as complacency sticked in? As, do we need to play one without the other, potentially? So, you know... It, it was so glaring, obviously, in the Algeciras game that you could look at it and say, oh, it's a one-off. But the fact it's happened now two weeks in a row and you've got yeah. Sayuta coming next weekend, it, it, it poses a question for Pace there, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, I hadn't even really thought about it that way. But I I think, you know, obviously, we're going to do the preview show later in the week. I, I, I'd still pick the both of them. But equally, mm. if Juan Day was in the starting eleven. I wouldn't yeah. lose my mind about it. Either. Mario, Musa, you know, there's yeah. competition back there. Oh, yeah. so, actually, you know. Sorry, sorry, I, I take it all back. Actually, it'd be Musa would be the one I'd be a, have at the top. Um, yeah, and like you said, um, Alfonso Herrero again. Um, it's brilliant. With, <laughs> with the mini mullet as well, the mini mullet of power. So not only has he got fantastic mustachioed facial hair, he now has. It's like mullet. if you're watching Australian Rules of Rugby or something like that, because now he's got the moustache to match the mullet and the um, source of his power. I don't know. But he, again, he was excellent in this first half. And, and uh, you know, two great I, stops. Two great stops. I'm going to be totally honest with you. When they broke through for the goal, I was sort of, he'll say this, even though it was a one-on-one. -on -one, He's so good at stopping. And I'm not putting blame on him, by the way. I don't mean that, but like I, I'm so sort of like I have so much faith and trust in him now. I was be like, what? <laughs> How's this gone in? Um, well, so I, let, let, like, I, let's I think that's it. Yeah, I think that was what you said at half time in the live stream as well, saying you're actually more surprised by the fact that he conceded the goal he conceded mm -hmm. rather than the two saves he made as well, yeah. which speaks volumes about um you know him and his and his now record as well so obviously that's now stopped but he's still the record holder for it but um yeah the he, the, the Lenara's goal was the same thing that happened again though it's just Herrera wasn't there to save us we were opened up far too easily um hands going up you know it, it's schoolboy error really you know looking to play it offside when Victor is clearly playing him onside by about two or three yards and I now was chucking his hands up rather than watching his man. Um, far too simple of a goal to concede. As, yeah, especially also, you said about like Alinar chucking his hands up and stuff, but it was like there was also like I watched it back this morning because I hadn't really seen the goals back until this morning. And the guy that goes through for Linares, he does like one of those sort of little body shuffles, one to the right, and then that way, and it all seems to like fool Alinar. And it's like I was like, oh no, he's running towards goal. It's really it's, it was it was a much it was much worse defending than I realized at the time watching it back. Cause I thought I thought I I was more annoyed in like the the pass, like you know, we let the pass get through so easy. There was just like this clear, you know, route to goal that the guy just passed into and he just waited the pass correctly. But mm. yeah, you're right. When I watched it back, I was just like, what is like the positioning of everyone is um all over the shop apart from Herrero who, you know, does narrow the angle and fair play to the guy. It's uh it's a good finish in the end. He sort of puts it the one place it's gonna go in. But yeah, it was yeah, it was, it was a shambles and yeah, particularly Einar this time. Um and he was very good as well, prefer that um, Perahon, who scored for them, he, he was difficult to deal with a lot in that first half. Um, kind of, I don't know, they, they had him playing on the right on the screen. I'm not saying FEF TV get this right every single time, but they put the start 11 on the screen. It was kind of looked to be out on the right, but he seemed to be playing kind of like more as a second striker to me. But he was uh, relentless. He was 
really, really good. And it's one of those things where we look at, you know, if we've got our scouting right, there's a there's a right midfielder up here or a second striker up here playing for, you know, with respect, a much smaller side. You know, can we bring him to La Rosa later? Yeah. I'd have him in a Malaga shirt every day of the week. Yeah, maybe, um, maybe he wants to stay in that lovely green and gold shirt, though. Maybe he... Maybe, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and he took his goal excellently, excellently as well. So, you know, ever, ever respect. And I think it's... It's, it's that old cliche, isn't it? You never want to concede just before half time. But actually, you know what? I think it's kind of the wake up call that Malaga needed and that, that Sergio Pace there needed as well. Because um, we were saying, you know, what would you change at half time if you're Pace mm -hmm. there? And I, I think he took that literally, maybe too literally, because he went berserk. I, I can't remember the last time I ever saw three substitutes come at half time at La Rosa Leda. It's been a very long time since. I can recall that ever happening. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. Like we've got we've got through thirty five minutes of this podcast now, and we've not mentioned him yet. So let let's go to one of those subs and just. Um, I think I said to you on the live stream. I said if he's fit, and I didn't know anything about his fitness um, apart from he was on the bench, which suggested he had something in him. I said I'll just bring Ramon on to do things, and let's just let's just hope and pray he's he's good like he used to be, and. Um, Fucking hell. <laughs> it's like he, he I I really like kept an eye on him like the whole game and just as the half went on, he got he just got better. It was like every decision was spot on, every pass was spot on. Um he was but I was watching him, he was like shouting at the two centre backs, I want to hear. And when they weren't giving it to him in certain places, he was like, Come on, he he absolutely boss the second half i cannot put it in other and i i know i said to you guys after um i was like am i might be in over the top here like when i thought about after because i see a bit giddy after the game i said it was the best 45 minute performance of any malaga player so far this season and i think i'm gonna stick to it actually i think um he was spectacular yeah, no, I wouldn't be too far off, off agreeing with you on, on, on that front, maybe with the exception of a couple of uh, Manu Molina performances. But I was, it, it was so exciting to see him come on. And Luke made a good point. You know, this is a lad who's not played any football this year. He's not really been involved in training that much either. So it, 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 it's a massive risk um, to bring him on. But my God, I don't know if it's he looked so great or Juan Pei looked so shit, but yeah, he, yeah there was, was that fantastic. And even when he came on the pitch and it zoomed in on him, he was wearing brand new preds. I was like, oh, yeah. we know we're in for a special treat now. And he just made it look so simple. Um, him and Manu Molina together um, just created perfect chemistry. And for the entirety of that second half, I didn't really see Lenares get out of their own no. what, 35 yards away from their own net because they were just hemmed in constantly by Ramon and Manu Molina just picking up stray balls and then just putting them back into dangerous positions and you know for me the second half was such a big different performance to the first half it, you couldn't maybe have had two more different performances in my opinion yeah. and, a, and a yeah. big inspiration for that was Ramon yeah and like every like you know I, at first he was just playing like quite a lot of simple passes to sort of like 30 yards out but they were just those simple passes he was executing and they were opening up so much more. And then I'd say in the last sort of 20 minutes, he was getting a bit more adventurous and yeah, he was, yeah, he's it, really. It's a vision thing, isn't it? I think like, say when you've got a player like Juan Pei and, and Gennaro is a different element to, but you know, mm. similar to Manu Molina is that when they make those key passes, it's a, it's a vision that they're seeing in front of them. They're making that key pass for a reason where sometimes other centre midfielders will just pass a sideways ball and they'll just knock it to a right back because it's just keeping possession. Whereas a, an elite footballer, a proper good footballer like Ramon is, and I still maintain that if he didn't get injured at the point that he got injured last season, the form that he was in, the Malaga would have stayed up in Segunda so. last year. There's no no two ways about it. We've been but very close, I think. Yeah, his, his effect on this and the effect on the players around him as well, because I think everyone also littered their performance, whether that was Herberto, whether that was Ferrero. Um, you know, he, he was just, he was really, really good. Cutting them open like Razor Ramon. 
<laughs> mullets everywhere. Yeah, mullets everywhere. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping you're a, a '90s WWF fan because he, he was one of my favourites. Uh, was Razor Ramon? Is he? Is, there's a mad documentary about him. I think I've watched once actually, which uh, cause he is an interesting character. The guy that uh, Razor Ramon. What's his name? Scott Hall, isn't it? Scott Hall. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, that that's for the WWF podcast um just the, again like you said i suppose you you've pretty much told us there uh, like the second half was malaga pinning back linares there's not loads and loads of clear chances so i'll just um highlight a couple first of all um the thing i've seen a lot on social media last sort of 48 hours is the kevin penalty shout um i'm not as clear cut on it as a lot of malaga fans i can see why it could have been given. Uh, do you have strong feelings on it? Not strong feelings. And and again, I'm not saying that he went down very, very easily. It kind of had the same kind of vibe to it that, I don't know if you saw the Anthony Gordon penalty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that, you know, the legs have gone in there and they've spun away from each other and one of them has gone down and, and sort of looking for it. So I don't think it would have been a, a penalty. Um, the Roberto one for me had a lot more, credence to it for being perfectly honest with you taking away his, his leg a bit like that even though you know he was making a challenge um but i think to be fair the referee in this game the officials in general to be honest weren't great um quite poor the linemen i've, I've never seen so many offsides and I, and I can't don't get me wrong i know ferrero is a clever footballer but he's not the kind of player that's going to be making those kind of runs to be offside. And a few of them, you just look back and you say, that's not offside. He's nowhere near offside. I agree. I, I thought it was, one, I think it was one of the worst refereeing performances we've had this year, actually. And and again, a, a lot of people were using the, the Kevin thing as the reason for that. But I thought the Roberto one was worse. And just lots of things. It just seemed to be a bit of a vibe about him like oh yeah i feel like that one's okay and for both teams at times as well mm. but i did i particularly agree with the offside um stuff um but it doesn't matter we did get a goal in the end i don't have much to say about the goal just a brilliant powerful header um I, I don't think we've talked about this, but it has occurred to me, Roberto has one of the great sort of you know people do like the fist pump celebration but he does the sort of like up and down fist punch celebration, which is much more visceral, I think. Um, no, he, he, he had an interesting afternoon as well, to be fair, because he, he clearly had a battle mm -hmm. in this match with uh, Rentero. We, we were having bets on whether Rentero would see out the 90 minutes and not get because uh, a red card because he was booked early on for basically trying to manhandle Roberto. He'd clearly been given an instruction to, to man mark him and. Um, I'm trying to think of like a comparison to who he looks like if people who haven't watched the game just but very generic uh national league center back. Uh what was guy the, big, uh, the guy that played for Luton for a long time. Steve McNulty. Steve kind McNulty. Of, uh, a bold Steve McNulty was basically the way I'd describe it. Latino Steve McNulty. Yeah. Had trials at had trials at higher above, but he's been on the circuit for a bit. Um and he and he played like it as well. And to be fair, he, he did well in that first off. But as soon as, as we said, we got the influence and the and the pressure that came with playing better football in the second half, Roberto could, um, uh, you know, give him a bit more back. And the fact that he won that header to get the goal in front of Rentero, who'd been, you know, doing so well to stop him from doing that, um, showed the quality of Roberto as well. Because it, you know, it's a simple goal, but it's a very well earned goal as well by Roberto. Yeah, it was, love, it was a lovely, emphatic header. Um, and yeah, I, I don't really think there's much else to say about the after that. Obviously, Roberto hit the bar again. That was um, we pushed a little bit more without really doing loads of damage. We, you know, like we were good, but um, but yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything you want to add before we do our chumbo and biznagas. I think it was just. I think it's the story of our season at the minute, and is that as much as we're like we were talking about Lenares coming forward and being direct and taking shots on goal, we we don't have that in bucketfuls. And there was something that David Picon put out early today about how many goals we've actually scored yeah, this right. season. And as much as we've got Roberto on double figures, it's actually quite a poor return. And for all the fantastic play we had in that second half. 
like you say, other than the two Roberto chances, you can't really put your hat on how many efforts there was. That, the there was a Kevin chance, wasn't there, where the ball sort of bounced back to him and he hit a left foot, and the goalie made a good save, I think. But I think Kevin should have probably buried it, to be honest with you. But... No, that's exactly. It's, it's uh, what is it? Samuel Casado, who was the keeper, who used to be yeah. at Malaga. He 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 didn't have much to do on his return to um, no, that was a later, really. And what was the other thing I noted as well? Um, oh, it was the fact that they had a player called Manolo Molina. Molina. Oh. So we've got Manu Molina, and they had Manolo Molina. <laughs> I was just yeah. like, I just thought that was quite fun. That is quite fun. Um, Okay, then let's go into uh, our Chumbo and Biz Nagas. I've got a feeling we've probably ticked this off already during our chat. but um, So I'll just tell you, my Chumbo, you, you've probably talked about him a bit more than me, but yeah, mine was Juan Bay as well. Um, I just thought he was really bad again. Just think the reason they were... You you, you picked out the defence saying they weren't great, but I think the reason our defence was getting got at a lot was because there was this hole in the midfield there. I just... Don't know what's going on with him at the moment. I don't think he's very good. No, we 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 were saying on the live stream he looks disinterested, and you know I think as Malaga fans we can be the ultimate authority on judging players who look disinterested, considering we've had so many of them over the <laughs> last few years, and he very much is fitting the mold in that way. He he sticks out like that. Um, mm. You know, where everyone seems to be very enthusiastic and forward and passionate and energetic. He looks lackadaisical. He looks lazy would probably be the word i would use and he didn't look interested in this match um and deservedly got pulled off at half time for a far superior footballer who's not played any football this season but still put in the better 45 minutes combined than Juan Pace done all year yeah and there you go that's a nice link um it's not going to surprise you um my biznaga is ramon enriquez just, just wow <laughs> just what a footballer um yeah. He's yeah. I he, I honestly think he would be in the top league by now if he didn't have those injuries. Because he's obviously he's not just had this big one. He's had a lot of I was going to say niggly ones, but you know they've always been injuries which have kept him out for like a month or two. And uh, yeah, it was, and and also it was lovely at the end to see him climb the stand to give his his mother a hug, which just made it even more adorable. So I don't know if you have anyone different. Uh, well, uh, honourable mentions as always, uh, Roberto for just for the goal and the pure energy. I thought Fer Ferrero had a good game as well. Um, yes, he was caught offside Absolutely. a lot, but he was a lot more influential in this game compared to what he was like against Algeciras. But don't get me wrong, I'm not usually in the business of hanging out um, Biznagas to substitutes, but Ramon, as we've you know we've waxed waxed lyrical over him, it, it, it was that impressive and deserving of. Um, a biznaga as well from us. Yes, yeah, so a whole a whole bouquet of biznagas for me for the moment. <laughs> just two biznagas. It, it is worth reminding people that this isn't just us. We, we've not tied everyone else up and put them in a cupboard or anything. There are other people on the, the Gary cast. They will be back soon, we're, we're, yeah. we're told and guaranteed. Um, yeah, and we should say, just speaking of the Gary cast community, I believe, uh, um, I think it was Luke put out on our on our social media to vote for biznaga and uh, uh, Ramon was the overwhelming winner there as well. So, um, yeah, um, just quickly, I was going to mention, you know, we love talking about Altani on this podcast. Of course we do. Um, he, he described our players as ghosts or like ghosts. Actually, I've got the full quote here. He said, thank you to the fans who came to the stadium to cheer on the team. In view of bad weather conditions and storms, I apologise for this draw as if it's anything to do with him. Um, I blame the players who came to the field thinking they would win. Unfortunately, they are like ghosts on the field. Um, and to be quite honest, I just thought, fuck off. <laughs> it, it doesn't make any sense. So what? You, you want your players to turn up to the pitch thinking that they're not going to win? Is that what we're saying? I, I didn't quite follow. When, when I saw ghosts on the field, I thought a field of dreams. Though. I thought, oh, what a, <laughs> build it and they will come. Builder and they will come, yeah. Um, Which is well, kind of well, the opposite of what Altani's done. He's destroyed it and they've not come. <laughs> although this week it was more like build it and they will come, brackets, unless it's raining. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah. 
But no, well, like I say, he just needs to keep his comments to himself. His time's slowly coming to an end. I suppose one question maybe for you, Matt, and I know I asked it you on the on the live stream, is do you think this is now the automatic position out of reach for Malaga? Nine yes. points? I, I, to be honest with I, you, I, I thought it probably before. Um, uh, it was, you know, there's that little sort of crazy optimism always in the back of your mind. I would never have ruled it out, but I would have been, you know, like gobsmacked if we pulled it off. Um, I think it now, requires too much of a swing now, doesn't it? Like, you know, Mal basically, Mal Mal have got to win every game and they've got to trust that Castellon are going to lose three of the next. Yeah. Was it eight, eight or seven games left of the season? Eight, I think, isn't it? Like, obviously, who knows? Maybe, I don't know, we, we beat Ceuta, of course, a slight rival at the moment. Um, I know we play Atleti B after that. Uh, you know, if we won in Cordoba, um, I guess there's a sort of swagger and confidence that could come from that, which could propel us, but I don't think so. Um, um, should say we mentioned him earlier, Javi Gracia, who is part of that round table, has done an interview saying Malaga are his favourites to go up from the playoffs. So I was like, oh, cheers, Javi. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I suppose a good thing at the minute, and just looking at the the table the way it is, well, obviously we, we went up to third with Ibiza losing yeah. to San Fernando. Um, to, to the English eyes or to the UK eyes, looks all wrong as well because uh, Ibiza have got um, the same amount of wins, draws and losses as Malaga, mm. but they've scored more. And um, have got a better goal difference from us. However, it's the head to head that comes into this. So Malaga on third on the fact that they beat Ibiza at La Rosaleda. But in a Kevin Masterclass. <laughs> another one. Um, but I think when we were looking at the potential at the minute, it would mean that Malaga finishing th third means he would play Celtic. Uh, Fortuna, I think There's it is. There's a couple of B teams in there as well, isn't there? Yeah, is there? I think Barca Bay are second, so they play currently Ceuta at the minute. Um, it looks like Depor are going all the way. Oh, they, no, but Depor, it's not, they're not fully away, are they? And it's like, no, I, I do no. just want Depor to smash the league now because I don't want to play them. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think the only other teams that are in there are... Uh, Tarragona and um, the cultural Leonins, Leonins, I yeah. think, are there or thereabouts. Really, I, I wouldn't mind playing them because they're a club that intrigue me. They're a really interesting football club. Um, but I don't actually know. I wouldn't want to play them because they're like, you know, ultra sort of fan owned socialist left wing and sort of in your face sort of club. Um, but I will say Leon is we we did last week um favorite cities. Leon would be my most underrated city in Spain. Brilliant place. No, um, it sounds like there's some mad ones, isn't there? And, and and maybe just to end on, I know I shared some news of the uh the intercity um mm. story last night to, to you guys. I don't know if you'd seen it before, but the fact that Hercules uh Club of Football are looking to acquire Intercity, who incidentally are in the league above them, which would mean that if Hercules buy into City, Hercules would gain automatic promotion into uh, Primera R yeah, FFA, yeah, yeah. and then basically where they currently are, that would become Hercules B. So big moves in Alicante at the minute. Um, it seems like the Primera, uh, the RFEF, so are behind it. Um, you've just got a very short timetable to get it all sorted, but yeah. weird, very weird. Yeah, I, I'd heard it mentioned a couple of months ago, actually, but I did read something last week saying that like it's likely to happen. Um, yeah, it's which, to be honest with you, I'm not actually that bothered because I I always thought Hercules are just a ridiculously cool football club. Um, so I'd rather play Hercules than Intercity, to be honest with you. And I and I guess they would play in Hercules Stadium, which is the big stadium in the middle of Alicante, which. Mm. Still haven't been to yet. I definitely need to go there. It looks the Hercules amazing. fans don't sound up for it though. That's yeah, the which I get. Of it. I get that as well. So um, I, I'm from pure sort of selfish reasons. <laughs> so, yeah, um, and it's a yeah. shame as much as we've slagged into City off as well in the past of being a bit of a nothing team. Well, actually, no. I think about it. Now, if you think about it, you've got Intercity and Hercules in the same city. 
possibly the coolest club name in the world with the worst club name in the world. <laughs> Combine them and you could get into Hercules. No, that's that doesn't sound right actually. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. It, it it's fascinating as well because I, I again I didn't know this about uh, Intercity, but they're the only football club in Spain listed on the Spanish stock market, stock exchange. So this okay. is the mechanism how they're able to to go about doing this. So it's 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 quite convoluted, but you know we'll, we'll watch that space. I suppose what I'm going to say, and maybe you will get that trip to Hercules. Um, I, I, I'm going to make that trip happen regardless. I've seen those floodlights. I've been outside the ground. It's happening. Um, although incidentally, I've not been to watch Intercity and Intercity, if we're calling it that. Either, so. <laughs> no, you got to watch them in Javier's back garden. I did indeed. Um, anyway, um, let's sort of wrap things up there with, you know, some lovely chat about Alicante football on this uh, Malaga podcast. Uh, is there anything we need to plug? There's no live stream this week, but let's talk about that a bit more on the preview show because obviously we're a bit closer then. Um, I don't think there's any, you know, go and read Rosaleda. Why can't I say Rosaleda fans? I feel like I have to say the la Rosaleda fans. Uh, fanzine if you're at the game this weekend um, but otherwise I will just big up my co-host here Nick Bell, thank you Nick Bell oh, Thank you for uh, for hosting Matt, like I say hopefully we'll have some newer faces on the, the preview show on, um, on on other weekend maybe we'll see, we'll see, it might just be me and you again we don't know <laughs> I was like I did see Chris at the game on Sunday I'm like who's this guy <laughs> mystery characters Pouring at him like is it real <laughs> um, oh yeah, you go. Go and listen. Not go and listen. Go and watch Chris's video of um, match day on Sunday and see rain. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. I feature at one point. Um, anyway, thank you, you guys, for listening. Go and subscribe and follow us on Twitter. You know all the stuff, but I'll just leave it there. Adios, vamos, Malaga. <laughs>